In this tutorial, you will determine how to calculate the rate of change, or the slope, when you are given a linear equation. A linear equation has a constant rate of change. Whether it is positive or negative, zero, or even undefined, it is constantly rising or lowering or staying the same at the same rate. So the slope of the line can be calculated as the ratio of the change in the y value to the change in the x value. We often represent it with these different words. Slope, rise over run, if you're looking at a graph, or this formula, y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. We typically use this when we have points or a table of values. To calculate the rate of change or the slope of a line um, or an equation or a graph or a table, you need at least two pairs of points. Another value we use sometimes to talk about the rate of change is this formula here. It stands for the change in y over the change in x, but we use the Greek letter delta, which means to change. So delta y over delta x can also be used as a word to describe the rate of change. By the end of this video, you'll be able to determine the slope or the rate of change if I give you an equation, if I give you a graph, or if I give you points or a table. When you have an equation, if it is set up in slope intercept or y equals mx plus b form, you can find the rate of change just by inspection. That means just by using your eyes. The coefficient of x when written in y equals mx plus b form will be the slope. So the rate of change for this first question here is 2. The rate of change for the second question here is negative 2. And the rate of change for this third question here cannot be found just by inspection. I would need to manipulate this sentence to get y all by itself. So I'm going to move the 3x to the other side, which would give me this. And then I'm going to divide by negative 1 to finally get that y all by itself. Now I can see that the slope is positive 3. You could also find the rate of change if I give you a graph. And typically, we count the units as the rise and the run. So in this graph here, we can see that we have a point here at 1, negative 2. We all, sorry, 1, negative 1. And we also have a point at 4, positive 3. So if I wanted to know the rate of change, I would want to know the distance between this lower point, how much it changes as I move up the y-axis, that's called the rise, and then how much it changes as I move along the x-axis, that's called the run. So how many units I rise, 1, 2, 3, 4, and how many units I run, 1, 2, 3, would be my rate of change, or 4, over 3. Rise 4 units, run 3 units, you'll get to the next integer value. Rise 4 units, run 3 units, you'll get to the next integer value. Let's try that again. Sometimes when you change from point to point, you can start from the higher point and move down, or you can start from the lower point and move up. Both directions would give you the same rate of change. So let's start from the lower point, and we'll count our rise up. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 up. So positive 6 is my rise. But then you'll notice I need to move to the left. 1, 2 to the left means negative 2. So my rate of change would be 6 over negative 2, also known as negative 3. So let's count the value from the other direction. If I start at the first point here, I would go down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, down 6, but I would move over positive 2. Down 6 over positive 2. But that results in the same rate of change. So if you are going to count units on a graph, 
be sure that you are aware of whether you're moving left or right or up or down because that will change the sign of your values. Oops. Why don't you try this one on your own? Pause the movie and then turn it back on when you're finished. So we have a rise of three and a run of one, two, three, four, five. A rise of three and a run of negative five. Or down three, right five. These are the same answers. This line is going downhill, right? So it makes sense that we would have a negative rate of change. Now if I gave you these two points here, it would take a long time to create a graph and actually count the, the units between each point. So when you have larger values or decimal rational values, we use this other formula to help us calculate the points quicker. So we use the change in the y, the change in the y values, that would be here, the change in the y values, and we put that over the change in the x values. Right? So sometimes we use this formula here. So we take the y value from the second point and subtract it by the y value from the first point. That's what those little values mean. They are subscripts, not exponents, and they have no mathematical value. They're just naming points, like this. If I have a point and it has an order, the ordered pair here would be x comma y, and if this was my first point, I would call it x1, y1. If I had another point, I would call that one x2, y2. If I had a third point, I would call that x3, y3. If I had a fourth point, I'd call it x4, y4, etc., etc. Well, you only need two points. So let's see how this fancy formula over here works. So if I have the point 30, 20, and the second point 50, 60, to find the rate of change, I would use this formula. The easiest thing I find for students to do is to actually take these two points, these ordered pairs, and line them up vertically. Once you do that, you can line up your x's and your y's very quickly. Because the formula says the y values are to be put in the numerator, then I like to circle these values here. Now remember, the rate of change is calculated as the difference in the y's and the difference in the x's. So I generally start my setup with a fraction bar and a minus in the middle in both the numerator and denominator. So the y in the second point would be 60, the y in the first point would be 20, and there's my new numerator. The x in the second point, right, you start with the second x, would be 50, and the x from the first point would be 30. Reduce if you can, and there's your rate of change. Let's try it again. So if I have two ordered pairs or two points, I typically tell my students to line them up vertically like this so that you have your x's and y's all lined up. Set up your rate of change, a fraction with a minus in the middle, and start with your second y value. So my second y value here is negative 5. My first y value is 4. My second x value is 2, and my first x value is negative 4. Remember, the 4 has a negative and the formula has a minus. So that gives you a minus, minus. So negative 4 minus, sorry, negative 5 minus 4 is negative 9. And 2 minus a minus 4, or 2 plus 4, would be 6. Reduce this here, and that's your rate of change. Why don't you pause the movie and try this one on your own? Remember to use this formula, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Okay, let's see how you did. Negative 1 sixth. This topic can be a little tricky and sometimes you get some special answers. So why don't you try these four more on your own? Pause the movie and give them a go. Okay, let's see how you did. Here are the four worked out solutions. You'll notice with letter C and letter D, our final answers had zeros in the fractions. A zero in the numerator has a slope of zero, but a zero in the denominator has no slope, or what we call undefined. 
you can't stop when you're solving a rate of change problem. You can't stop here. You have to interpret the zero in your fraction and either state whether it is zero or undefined. If you simply leave it in this format and you don't interpret it, you won't get full points. All right, the last question I can pose is a table or ordered pairs that are conveniently organized within a chart. So the process is exactly the same. You can still use this formula here of y2 minus y1 x2 minus x1. You can still use that formula. And you can still pick any two points that you want. So if I use this formula y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, I would just need to pick two points, either these two points or these two points or even these two points. It doesn't matter. If it's linear, you'll always get the same fraction. So I could do the same process that I did on the previous examples, or I could try this new pattern method, which is that the change in y over the change in x So y2 minus y1 means the difference between the two y's, or the pattern of how the y's are changing, the change in the y, the delta y. And x2 minus x1 is the difference between the two x values, or the pattern between the x's. So I can simply look at my chart and mark whether the number is increasing or decreasing, and then by how much. So this is going up by 1, and this is going up by 2. And this is my y value. So the change in my y values is 1, and the change in my x values is 2. So the slope would be 1 half, or the rate of change would be 1 half. And even if I did it with other points, I still get the same value. If I chose the first and third points, 2 to 6 has an increase of 4, and 4 to 6 has an increase of 2, but you notice that 2 over 4 is still the same rate. So let's try this again. The pattern of the y's over the pattern of the x's. So here I have down 4, up 2. So negative 4 over 2, also known as negative 2. If I try another value, I should get the same answer. So this one looks like it's going down 20. And this one looks like it's going up 10. Negative 20 over 10. That's the same rate. Why don't you give these two a try on your own? Pause the movie and then check your results. Okay, let's see how you did. The slope for C was 3 and the slope for D was negative 2 thirds. I hope this tutorial helps you find the rate of change when given a question four different ways.